and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to talk to you about power. We're going to show you how to put power into your van. We're going to talk to you about leisure batteries. We'll talk to you about solar panels. We'll tell you why the air fryer's not working. And we'll show you the best thing you can do with one of these. Okay, so just at the back of the van, I'll show you how our leisure battery system works. So this is the leisure battery that means that we can use things whilst we're out and about without being plugged into anything. So first of all, as Claire alluded to earlier, your traditional three pin plugs will not work in the van because they will only work when you're on an electric hookup because that uses big power that uses 240 volt power which we don't have we've only got 12 volt power so what we use is we use this section at the back so you can see you've got a couple of options you've got this switch first which means you either get power from your leisure battery you see those lights went on or you get power from your vehicle battery now you would hardly ever use the vehicle battery because you'll flatten the battery and you won't be able to drive off anywhere so that is only for an emergency in the middle of the night if your leisure battery has gone we've then got a switch for our lights and our lights work like this you see the light there the colored lights are at the end and they're plugged in on usb which comes under auxiliary so if i turn that off they'll go off now, one thing you can see is, let me just take these plugs out. As you can see there, we've got our meter. Now, when it says 12.8, that indicates that without a load, the battery is fairly full. Now, when you start putting loads on, so if I start switching lights on and if I start plugging things in, that should, in theory, go down. See, it's gone down to 12.7. But when you want to check the condition of a battery, you always want to check it without a load. So always do that first before you do anything else. One of the main ways you put power into your van is through one of these. So it's a leisure hookup. Now you see that is the fitting that should be on your van. There you go, Claire. So that's one end. You also have an exact same fitting, the other end, but it's not got a flap on it. The one with the flap goes into your van, okay? So we'll plug that in like that. Okay. Now with the other end, when you go to a campsite, you normally get a bollard that's got a fitting like that. If there's no bollard with a fitting like that and you want to charge it at home, for example, there is a way. I shall show you. What you get is you get an adapter like this. It's a standard three pin plug and this goes into there. Now what I'm gonna do for you guys is I'm gonna test something I've always wanted to test, I've never tested before. I'm gonna see if a power bank can charge the van. We're only gonna do it briefly because I've not unwound the cable and it's actually a fire hazard if we keep it going. But I just wanna see if it works. And let's see what happens. And there we go. You can see that the van is actually charging from the all powers and it's only drawing 38 watts of electricity. So if you just want to top up your leisure battery, you could, you could do that for 14 hours on this. So as well as plugging the van in, driving the van, there's a third way to put power into the van and that's via solar panels. However, if you're in Europe, it might work. In this country, we only ever really get anything from about April to September in this van. We've got a small solar panel on the roof, but we can't really rely upon it. Okay. So I've been for a few things that we power using the 12 volt auxiliary at the back. Now, I just wanted to go through the fridge because obviously that's something that people ask about. So with our fridge, we've got three options. You can power it when you're on an electric hookup, you can power it by battery, and you can power it by gas. Now we always um, we always thought with the with the fridge we were never sure what battery meant and we've only just found out so we weren't sure if it was the leisure battery or the vehicle battery 
as it turns out, it was neither of them is powered by the alternator of the van. So that will only be in power when the engine is going on the van and the engine puts power into the batteries and also into the fridge. And that is one of the main ways that our batteries get charged is when we're driving. So the alternator will charge both the engine battery and the leisure battery. The other thing that our battery powers, and a lot of people take this for granted, is it powers our heating. So our heating system is a petrol heater. A lot of vans have diesel and there'll be a diesel heater. And people think that that powers it. That doesn't, that's what creates your heat, but you still have a glow plug that starts up and you also have the fan that blows the heat out. So I'm gonna show you the heating and then I'm gonna send Claire to the back of the van and you'll see that our panel will have dropped significantly from the 12.8 that you saw earlier. So if I just turn the heating on there, like that. And there we go, that should come on in a second. And I'm gonna send Claire to the back of the van now and I'm gonna get her to see what the, uh, what the panel says. Is it less than 12.8, Claire? Yeah, it's now showing us 12.3, so it's dropped already. So it's dropped significantly, yeah. because that is the power that it needs to get it going. Now, one tip that someone told us is that, I don't know whether this is the right thing or the wrong thing, but it has worked for us, is that because it takes a lot of power on startup, if you start your heating whilst you've got the engine running, then it will um, it will create less of a surge and it'll create less of a drain. Just while we're talking about energy and electricity, I think there's one important thing to say. So we fought it for ages and we thought, oh, there's gotta be a way of having an electric kettle in the van when you're off grid. Not without a massive battery and a massive inverter. Yes, the power banks would power it, but it would drain it quickly. So the easiest way to boil a kettle is just like this. So the other option you've got is you've got power banks. Now some of you might remember, we were sent out this um, about six months ago by All Powers, and I said it looked absolutely hideous. Now, I'm not gonna ignore the elephant in the room. It looks absolutely hideous, I'm not gonna lie. It looks like the guy that designed it has thought, what should a battery look like? He's gone into Halfords, he's seen a car battery on the shelf, and he's gone, hmm, that's a good idea. I said, it was a good product. I said, but it looked terrible. Now, I'll tell you what, they've actually upped their game. And they've sent us two more things to try out. One of them, we're gonna give away as a prize next week. Okay, so we've gone from something that looks absolutely hideous to this beauty. Now, we'll go into a bit more detail next week, but this is the R600. Just look at the color. It looks completely finished. It doesn't look like a car battery. I think that this is the sexiest model on the market. You've heard it here. Okay, so the other thing that they've sent us out, and this one is massive, is they've sent us out the R1500. Now this is fantastic, it's massive. It gives out 1800 watts worth of power, and it's just over 1100 watt hours. So if you maxed it out, it would only last an hour. However, you're only gonna max it out on things like air fryers, stuff like that. Now things we've got is we've got along the front, I can't even see what I'm presenting to you guys, um, but you've got little plug sockets there and you've got the good covers. So that's for your AC. So I've got USB slots. Oh. And is there a USB-C on the front, yeah, Claire? Yeah, USB-C as well. Okay. And what else you got? The round one. You've got the round one, so that's the cigarette lighter plug. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise known as a 12 volt. And also, here's the creme de la creme. If Claire comes up, you've got not one, but you've actually got two wireless charging ports on the top. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, the things that you can do with this is you can charge it at home. You can charge it via a solar panel. Now they did send us out a new one for this and they also sent us out one last year um, for the product I've just shown you. I'll drop some footage in of the one that we used last year because there is uh, absolutely no sun outside so it's pointless me showing you at this time. They've got stuff at the side as well. Got what we got at the side? Sorry, Claire's reminding me what we've got at the side. So we've got other things. So here we've got, this is how you charge it. So that's your inputs. And then on the other side, You've also got, it's expandable. 
So you can connect this to another one and you can join two or three of them together to make a more powerful beast. What we wanna do is we wanna actually show you this in its uh, maximum capacity. So I believe in testing these things to the max. And the way that we're gonna test it to its max is by cooking a Cadbury's cream egg in an air fryer. There you go, you've seen it here. <laughs> Watch this, let's see if it can cope with the air fryer first, and then we'll show you what we're gonna do with a Cadbury's cream egg. Okay, so first things you need is you need just roll croissants. Um, this is like a pastry that you make croissants out of. The other thing you need is a Cadbury's cream egg. Now, first of all, you get this package in and you open it up, and I can't remember how you open it. Right, hang on. No, I think I remember. You take that bit off first and then you twist it. That's it. Well, it twists itself. There oh, you go. And then it just bulges out. There you go. I think you peel it back and peel some off. Tessie's sniffing. <laughs> but you peel some off and you roll it out. Put your egg in the middle and we'll wrap the egg. So carefully wrap this egg up. We'll roll it up. Uh, I'm not an artist, so just like that. Just like that. Just like so. And then what we do is we get some egg wash. There is a bit of a story about egg wash. I thought you could actually buy egg wash. Uh, apparently you can't. Apparently what egg wash is, is it's an egg that's broken that you use to wash. So yeah, if you ever see it in a, in a uh, cookery book, egg wash doesn't exist. They just put it in there to throw you. <laughs> Where's my egg wash? One that Claire prepared earlier. You might need to whisk it a bit. This is whiskey business, this. Right, so, let's open her up, and we'll whisk her up, like so, like that, with my paintbrush. That's another thing, actually, we got one of these paintbrushes, and it was pink, so I was looking around the kitchen. Brush. It's a pastry brush. I was looking around the kitchen for this pink pastry brush, <laughs> and I couldn't find it. I says, Claire, I said, where's the pastry brush? She's got this one out. I says, is that new? She says, yes. She says, I used the other one to dye my hair. <laughs> Right, here we go. So that's all mixed up now. So what we do is we paint this like so. I could get this all over my hands. <laughs> I don't think it has to be soaked, David. It doesn't have to be soaked. <laughs> I think the wrong one of us is holding the camera. Claire had the camera facing herself a minute ago. Oh, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she says, oh, she says it's filming me. I says, yeah, you need to turn it round. But she's saying that I'm not painting this properly, so I think we'll swap roles next time for next video. <laughs> there we go, there's that one. Speaking of roles, I'm just gonna roll the next one and then I'll pick you up afterwards. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on the all powers and I'm gonna use it to power an air fryer. You see, classic air fryer there. Um, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna put the eggs inside the air fryer. So we'll see if the all powers can handle the air fryer and we'll see how the eggs come out. Fingers crossed. There we go, it's turned on. So what you can see is if Claire pans to the screen, you can actually see that the air fryer is pulling 1,355 watts. You can actually see, because it's only 87% battery, you can see that it would last 30 minutes. So we're going to have to be quick with this. They'll, they'll cook quicker than 30 minutes. in they go. So one thing to bear in mind, we've only just found this out. So when this air fryer was getting up to temperature and it had the red light on because it wasn't at temperature, it was pulling 1300 watts and this was only gonna last half an hour. However, if you look at the screen now, because it's up to temperature, it's actually not drawing a lot of power at all. It's drawing 28 watts and it would last hours. So yeah, once it's heated up, completely different story. Okay, so you can see that they're coming on nicely and they are browning over. What do you want? You're not having any. Not for you, not for doggies.
And there we go. Croissants stuffed with a Cadbury's cream egg. Get in my belly. Ooh, ah, that's hot. Ooh, ah. Okay, so Claire's already chopped into it because Instagram takes priority over you guys. <laughs> we'll see what she thinks. Mm. Is it good? Mm. It's messy though, isn't it? Look at that. Mm, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah? So good. So good. Can you recommend it to other van lifers? 100%. Fantastic. This is a good Easter treat. We're a bit early, but we're trying it out for you guys, you know? <laughs> so as you saw, the All Powers was very capable of powering the air fryer. Yeah, so although we've only had that specific model for a couple of days, um, we've put it for its paces in terms of pushing it to the limit. So as a brand, we've had All Powers since September. We think they're fantastic and we rely upon it quite a lot. Now, I'll be honest with you, we're not paid at all on commission. So yes, they sent us out of product free, but it's not in our interest whether people buy it or whether they don't. So all we'll say is that we've worked mm. with All Powers, they've worked with us, and it's a product that fits our needs. Yeah, it worked for us, so we would, yeah. we would get one. So as you can see, there's a few different ways of getting power into a van. Now, personally, if I was to ever build a van from scratch, I would do away with a power system. I wouldn't have a leisure battery and I would probably have um, numerous different power banks because I think that works well. Talking of power, I wonder how much electricity the Land of Lights took last week. Yeah. Have a look at this. So hopefully you enjoyed that and hopefully you're paying attention because we have got competition for you next week to win one of the All Powers Power Bank. It's the sexy one. <laughs> Keep watching, but for now, Doolittle's done. Oh.